This week, modifying the cabinet and putting the washer back in. When they built our coach, they put the washer dryer in a cabinet 30 inches off the floor. The shutoff valves were under it, behind some drawers. So to access the components under the top cover required disassembling the cabinet and removing the washer. Not an easy task as was seen in the first video of this series. I wanted to be able to access the components under the top without having to remove the washer. I also find getting down on my knees is not as easy as I remember from years gone past. So I wanted the valves to be at a height that wouldn't require crawling. While I had the washer out, I removed two of the drawers, the framing, platform, and doors. This left one drawer on the bottom and space to build new framing and a platform. The frame for the platform is made of one by two inch pine board. I pre-drilled holes for the screws so the wood wouldn't split. I used screws and glue to assemble the pieces together. With the frame assembled, I put it in place, aligned to the bottom drawer face frame. Then I used shorter screws to attach it to the face frame and the walls of the cabinet. The back of the frame needed more support, so I added two legs to the frame going down to the floor. Then I used the plywood from the original platform, but I cut off the back edge of it to clear the plumbing. I used drywall screws to attach it to the frame. Next, the power outlet needed to be moved to a spot that I could reach without having to remove the washer. This only required unscrewing it from the original spot and attaching it to the new spot. Part of the issue with the washer was the drain. It had become partially clogged with the laundry product residue, fabric softener. And with lowering the washer, the drain standpipe was way too high. This was simple to correct. Just cut off the drain pipe. Glue a coupler in place.
and then cut off eight inches of the drain pipe and glue the drain pipe back on. Then to raise the valves up so that they could be reached from the top of the washer, I turned the water off and cut off the hot water valve. Then I added about 30 inches of PEX, that's P-E-X, tubing to the original tubing. I had to use barbed connectors with pinch clamps to do this work. The tool for pinching these clamps wasn't cheap, but it worked so well that I feel it was worth every penny. Then I used a nail-on clamp to attach the pipe to the old framework. With that on the tubing, I could then attach the valve. Then I just did the same with the cold water. PEX tubing comes in multiple colors now, unlike the original tubing, so I used red for the hot water and blue for the cold. When I was taking out the old platform and framing, I saw that the factory had used urethane foam insulation to brace the plumbing against vibration. So I decided to try the same trick, but I think I made it too thick. To put the washer back in, our good friend Brandon came over and helped me to lift it back in. A 10 inch lift was a whole lot easier than a 30 inch lift. With it in place, all connections are easy to reach and now I can open up the top when I need to. I still have to add some drawers and doors to the cabinet that will take advantage of the new space, but that'll be another video. Thanks for watching our video. If you like what you see, press the like button below and subscribe. And also check out our other videos.